acceleration in designing an efficient satellite communication. So in this presentation, we'll be dealing only with the Earth segment. Okay. So what are present in the Earth segment? Let us see. So the Earth segment, which is being considered in our presentation or in this unit, is uh, having a, a receive only home TV systems, which we call TVRO. In that, we have outdoor unit and indoor unit. Followed by a specific master antenna TV system, which is called as MATV. Then community antenna TV system, CATV. And how the transmission and reception takes place at earth stations. Followed by the antenna system, the terrestrial interface, and the equipment that can be used for measuring the G bar T, C bar N, and EIRP and antenna gate. So these are the things that we are going to see in unit number three. So to start with the introduction, we'll divide uh, the satellite communication into two different parts. One is the space segment. Second one is the earth segment or ground segment. So the space segment includes the satellite and ground facilities, which we call it as TTC elementary tracking and command that we had uh, seen in uh, unit number one TTC. So next segment consists of earth segment or the ground segment that has the transmit and receive earth stations. So the earth the earth of a satellite communication consists of I transmit as well as receive earth station. So transmit would be at your transmitter part, receive would be at your receiver part and these two are being separated at a distances. It could be kilometers in terms of 100, 200 kilometers or it could be in terms of 1000 kilometers, 2000 kilometers or so on. So the transmit receive a Transmitter is uh, at station and the receiver station will be always be present a distant apart. So the earth segment which consists of this transmit and receive earth stations is what we are going to see. So one of the simplest is the, is the home TV receive systems. This home TV receive systems are meant only for receiving, which are the simplest form of your, as an example of your uh, satellite communication, in short TVRO. And the most complex form of the satellite communication in the earth segment are the terminal stations that are used for international communication networks which are used for intercommunicating different communication networking, okay, which is your terminal stations. So the earth segment are those stations that are on ships, apart from terrestrial that are on ships that are present commercially in islands, in forests or in military areas or even in aeronautical mobile stations. Those are coming under earth segments. The stations present at uh, aeronautical mobile stations in military areas, in commercial establishments, ships, homes, forests, whatever might be that are used for receiving or transmitting your signals comes under your earth segment. So the earth stations are used for logistic support. If 
logistic support of satellites such as providing a TTC functions okay, which is your telemetry tracking and command telemetry is your signal that is being taken or which is being acquired or by using the principle of acquisition over a geographical area tracking and commanding So this is the same. Which segment consisting of which station on ships at sea, commercial and military land stations, commercial and military aeronautical mobile stations. So now let us see the receive only home TV systems. So this receive only home TV systems are an example of direct broadcast satellite okay what is this what does this direct broadcast satellite service does is that it only broadcasts means the studios will be present so those studios will only broadcast to a particular home or to a particular channel so that signals are being obtained by the receivers only so whatever we are having at homes is only a receiver we do not transmit on a television sets the examples are your uh, dt dth which we call as direct to home those are the best examples of your broad direct broadcast satellite services so for this the frequency bands used was a c band operating at 4 gigahertz c band now currently they are shifted to KU band which is operating at a frequency of 12 gigahertz. The antennas that are being used are having a diameter of up to 3 meters in C band while in KU band it is being reduced to 1 meter diameter. So this is why the reason they are shifted from C band to KU band. So the antenna diameter is being minimized and the cost production in that is miniaturized. So this is the reason for shifting from C band to KU band. So this is just an example of your receive home only TV systems. TV or TVRO system. So you can see that an antenna which is of a parabolic reflecting antenna which is present which acquires the signals from the space and uh, it is operating at 12.2 to 12.7 gigahertz those signals falls on the parabolic antenna and is focused towards an uh, horn polarized antenna or the horn antenna then we have a LNA low noise amplifier which consists of which is coming under the outdoor unit outdoor unit of your home so from there the signal travels to the indoor unit you can see 952 1450 megahertz so that signal is fed to your that frequency is fed to your amplifier then we have a uh, receiver of the satellite satellite receiver we call which is present inside the home or we call it as a satellite receiver in the indoor unit so where we do tracking filtering and down conversion with an intermediate frequency block of 70 megahertz then we give it to FM modulation then A modulation Sorry, uh, FM demodulation and AM demodulation where the modulated signals at your transmitter is being received. So then it is being visualized on the television set. 
you can see this is an example of a monochrome television or a black and white television that you all are familiar which was present some 15 to 20 years back i think so 20 years might be black and white tv was being used so there the signals are being received so for carrier purpose we use a tunable oscillator which is being selected by channel select and display unit so tuner so this uh, receive only home tv is divided into two parts one is the outdoor unit another one is the indoor unit so outdoor unit will be present outside the home indoor unit will be present inside the home where the indoor unit is meant only for processing of signals it processes the signals it filters demodulates it find appropriate uh, frequency any amplification required it does any selecting the channel it does it separates the audio signal and the video signal and gives it its corresponding amplifier segments whereas the outdoor unit is only for receiving your satellite signals in the frequency 12.2 to 12.7 gigahertz a reflector antenna a horn antenna and an amplifier or a converter mostly we will be using a low noise amplifier lne so that will be present within the antenna for reception of your signal so the planned broadcasting direct to home tv receiver takes place in the ku band 12 gigahertz band this is known as uh, direct broadcast satellite service dbs and there is uh, some variation in the frequency bands assigned for uh, different geographical regions so i had given you an example here of america where they use the downlink band is where they use the downlink frequency of 12.2 to 12.7 gigahertz normally it is 12 gigahertz it differs from region to region based upon the geographical conditions <laughs> then a uh, comparatively larger satellite receiving dishes larger satellite dishes as you can see in the diagram these dishes vary with a diameter from 1.83 meter to about 3 meter that is 6 feet to 10 feet in some locations depending upon the geographical area or the range of coverage of the signal okay. originally this uh, downlink signals were never uh, intended for home reception but they were uh, used for network relaying in commercial tv outlets such as vhf and uhf tele broadcast station and cable uh, cable tv operators studios fortunately it was designed for that then they had uh, shifted to every individual users at homes which we call as dth dth or direct home then okay. then about the uh, c band region which had uh, larger receiving antenna the c band uh, receiving antenna had a larger diameter as said earlier which was used as a relay for commercial tv outlets that differed from uh, ku band only in the frequency of operation of outdoor unit so see the Intel satellite 702 was uh, launched with uh, C band in this measurements, which ranges from the EARP measurement ranges from 77 decibel watts to 80 decibel watts in 30 240 gigahertz. Similarly, 
74 decibel watts to 77 decibel watts in the frequency range 24192 00 hertz 71 decibel watts to 74 decibel watts in the frequency range 18 One double four double zero hertz. And for uh, sixty eight decibel watts to seventy one decibel watts, the EARP value was obtained for a frequency of twelve zero nine six double zero hertz. And less than uh, sixty eight decibel watts per power, if it is required. It is being done at six four six zero four eight double zero hertz. In short, you can call all them in thirty gigahertz, twenty four gigahertz, eighteen gigahertz, twelve gigahertz, and six gigahertz. Intel set seven one two. Next is the polarization interleaving. The frequency. Next concept is the polarization interleaving. The frequency reuse by using the alternatively polarized LHC, RHC. Or the vertical or horizontal polarization is to reduce the interference to an acceptable levels. So for this, in order to reduce the polarization interleaving due to interference, the signal is fed to indoor unit with a wide band signal covering the range of 950 to 1450 megahertz. So this is why from the outdoor unit we get the frequency signals in 12.2 to 12.7 gigahertz in uh, America. So that is converted to 950 to 1450 megahertz and it is fed into the indoor unit of the TVRO system. So there we have a uh, 70 megahertz IF frequency carrier that demodulates that demodulates the signal this 950 to 14750 megahertz is converted to an uh, intermediate frequency of 70 megahertz by using the uh, SSB single sideband suppression which specifically we use vestigial sideband suppression which is fed into one of either your uh, UHF very high frequency or the ultra high frequency channels of a television set. So there are many types of communication such as television, video, facsimile, high speed data signals that are having a larger bandwidth incorporating a low frequency content. So for this the choice of uh, single sideband systems will have a poor frequency response so a vestigial sideband modulation is used. So everyone are familiar with the vestigial sideband uh, modulation which is derived from your double sideband DSB. So where in vestigial sideband only a part of your bandwidth can be transmitted having full occupation of the bandwidth signals.
this is the single sideband versus the amplitude modulation it's difference which most of you all are familiar would have studied in your analog communication since the carrier is not transmitted there is a reduction by 50 percentage of the transmitted power which is minus 3 db meter three decibels in uh, amplitude modulation or 100 percent modulation half of the power is co compromised by the carrier with the remaining half of the power in both the side bands whereas in a single side band transmission only one side band is transmitted there is a further reduction by 50 percentage in transmitted power which we get 6 decibel per meter finally because only one side band is received the receiver's standard bandwidth is reduced by one half thus effectively reducing the required power by transmitter by another 50 percentage so we get 9 decibel so this is why the vestigial side band is used in radio communication that only a part of your uh, bandwidth is cut off or suppressed and we get the entire bandwidth so vestigial sideband transmission is similar to ssb in which one of the sidebands is completely removed in a vestigial sideband however the second sideband is not completely removed but filter to remove all within the desired frequencies so this is adapted in the television standards television broadcasting the ntsc pal ccam analogic video formats use this vsb and uh, if the signal is transmitted in am mode mostly all your video signals is transmitted only in am amplitude modulation mode if it is transmitted in the AM modulation mode, all the broadcasting is done using vestigial sideband. Because there would be more bandwidth available. And this is used in your ATSC standardized system. So the bandwidth of the vestigial sideband is therefore only slightly larger than of SSB, but it has increased low frequency performance of DSB. So any queries till this uh, TBR was? Receive only home TBR. I'll show the block diagram again. If there is any queries, put in chat box. You can type queries in chat box.
Since there are no queries, I proceed on to the outdoor unit. So in the indoor unit, where we get the signals in uh, intermediate frequency range, which are present inside the house or inside the buildings or which are not exposed outside, is acute for a home reception of either C-band signals or KU-band signals. So some manufacturers provide only C-band manufacturing equipments and some manufacturers provide both dual band C-band and KU band equipments. So here we have a small mesh type reflector that is used to focus the signals into a dual feed horn that has uh, two separate outputs. One would be for a C-band and another one would be for your KU band. So most of the television programming originates as the first generation signals also called as the master broadcast quality signals. These are transmitted through the satellite, the C-band to the network head end stations where they are retransmitted as compressed digital signals to the direct broadcast satellite providers. So there is an advantage of uh, C-band where a large number of satellites available for reception is used as compared to the di direct broadcast systems, DBS systems. In this uh, C-band, uh, most of the Transmissions are uh, scrambled where it has uh, free channels that can be received, which we called as wild feeds. These are also free, but are un unannounced programs where the details of this <coughs> can be found from various publications and internet sources. The C band users can also subscribe to pay TV channels. And there is another advantage is that the subscription services are cheaper than direct broadcast satellite or the cable because of multiple source programming available in C-band. So the most widely advertised receiving system for C-band is appears on the 4D TV manufactured by Motorola company. So Motorola company is offering 4D TV which is operating in C-band system. So which enables the following features. One is free analog signals and wild feeds, video ciphering 11 with subscription services, free DigiCypher 2 services and subscriber DigiCypher 2 services. So this is about the indoor unit. Next comes the outdoor unit which is present outside the home, outside the commercial building or outside the environment. So this consists of receiving antenna that is fed directly into a low noise amplifier or a converter. Generally we will be using a parabolic reflector on antenna which is mounted at the focus. So then there is a common design that focuses directly in front of the reflector for better interference rejection. Then we have the gain for 3 meter dish operating at 4 gigahertz. Comparing the gain of a 3 meter dish at 4 gigahertz with a 1 meter dish at 12 gigahertz, the ratio d bar 1 equals to 40 in each case. So the gains will be almost equal. Although the free space loss are much higher at 12 gigahertz compared with 4 gigahertz. So depending upon the need, 
or depending upon the service we can opt either 4 gigahertz c band or 12 gigahertz ku band so the downlink frequency of 12.2 to 12.7 gigahertz bands over a range of 500 megahertz that can accommodate 32 television or fm channels which in which every channel is of having 24 megahertz wide so some channels may overlap by using the left hand circular polarization or the right hand circular polarization or the vertical or horizontal polarization to reduce interference to an acceptable level so which we call it as polarization interleaving so this polarizer may be switched to desired polarization from the indoor control unit required at the receiving horn so the receiver horn fits into a low noise amplifier or a converter followed by a amplifier or a converter so this is the same diagram where i am concentrating only on the outdoor unit so tv arrow system outdoor unit you can see that you have a parabolic reflector antenna signals are obtained from satellite they are being fed into the receiver horn on antenna and a polarizer then to a low noise amplifier or a converter then to a converter which converts them into 950 to 1450 megahertz so this consists of a receiving antenna feeding directly into a low noise amplifier or a converter combination so the measurement can be done by d by lambda is equal to approximately 40 either 3 meter in c band and 1 meter for <coughs> ku band so this is how the conversion does Twelve point two to twelve point seven gigahertz, having five hundred megahertz with thirty two TV or FM channels with twenty four megahertz each. Polarizer will be switched from the indoor unit for polarization, having left hand circular, right hand circular, or vertical or horizontal polarization. Then the horn is fed to low noise amplifier that has a low noise block that has a low noise amplifier on the converter which provides a gain for a broadband of 4 to 12 gigahertz signal that converts it to a lower frequency to the indoor unit of having 950 to 1450 megahertz using the feeder so this combination is referred to as LNB or the low noise block having LNA low noise amplifier as a converter then the low noise block provides a gain for the broadband 12 gigahertz signal and then converts the signal to a low frequency so that a low cost coaxial cable can be used as a feeder to the indoor unit the signal would be fed to the indoor unit by using this frequency band then this is amplified passed to a tracking filter it selects the desired channel as shown in the above figure. As already mentioned, polarization interleaving is used and only half the 32 channels will be present at the input of the indoor unit for any one setting of the antenna polarizer. So this antenna polarizer eases or simplifies the job of tracking filter Sells alternate channels will be separated in frequency. The selected channel is again down converter, this time from nine fifty megahertz range to 1450 megahertz is converted to a usual frequency of 750 megahertz where it is being done in the very high frequency range
Next, what we are going to do is that we are going to take this 70 megahertz amplifier that amplifies the signal up to a level required for demodulation. So there is a major difference between the conventional TV and the direct broadcast satellite TV is that frequency modulation is used in a DBS direct broadcast satellite service whereas amplitude modulation in the form of vestigial single sideband is used in conventional TVs. So that switching our option is available. So then this 70 megahertz FM intermediate frequency carrier must be therefore demodulated. So we use, an, we use an appropriate demodulator and the baseband information used to generate the vestigial sideband signal is fed into the one of this VHF or UHF channels of a standard television. So this is the elaborated indoor unit diagram. So the signal obtained at the outdoor is 12.2 to 12.7 gigahertz having 500 megahertz 32 television channels 24 megahertz each. They are down converted to an intermediate frequency of 70 megahertz where the most of the gain is obtained. Then it is given fed to an amplifier. Then 70 megahertz intermediate frequency block FM demodulation, AM demodulation to the receiver. So this is indoor unit. So any queries in the indoor and outdoor unit presentation, you can type in chat box. Why? Because we are moving to another system, which is MATV. Some five minutes time is given for asking queries, then we'll proceed further.
Okay, since there are no queries in the chat box, I move on to the next topic, which is master antenna TV system. In short, we call it as MA TV. The master antenna TV system is used to provide reception of direct broadcast television or FM channels to a smaller group of users, which consists of a single outdoor unit and having a number of indoor units. So whereas in the previous case, we had seen only a single outdoor unit and a single indoor unit in PVRO systems. You can see, I'll show you the block diagram again. In PVRO system, we had two parts, outdoor unit and indoor unit, and we had only one outdoor unit and one indoor unit in TVRO. Whereas when we see the master TV, we are having only one single outdoor unit, antenna or an LNB block, low noise amplifier and a converter, which is fed to number of indoor units, probably a small group of users. Okay, so this is what. This is the diagrammatic representation of the outdoor unit in Smart TV, MA, Master Antenna Television System. So we have the outdoor unit. So that outdoor unit having the reflector antenna receives the signals as in PVRO. Then it uh, focuses towards the LNA or LNB block low noise amplifier converter block, then they are being given to given to the power divider in indoor unit. So what happens is that we have a polarization diplexer, which divides them into two of having a LHC polarization channel group and RHC polarization channel group. So this is your outdoor unit in MATV. So then they are fed to power divider segment. So from the power divider segment, then <coughs> channel group selector will be there. It selects the channels and it is fed to few number of users, probably three, four, five, six, seven, till 10 of same indoor unit receivers. Then appropriate modulators and demodulators will be used. The concept is one outdoor unit and one indoor unit in TVRO, in uh, MATV, one outdoor unit and uh, many indoor units. So the best example is a master antenna TV system providing reception of the direct broadcast satellite television or FM channels to a small group of users. Example, tenants in an apartment building or a group of users which consists of a single outdoor unit antenna or LNAC feeding a number of indoor units which is basically similar to your home system already described but with each user having access to all channels independently each user will see different channels not the same channel depending upon their usability so the advantage is that it requires only one outdoor unit and uh, feeder cables are required for each sense of polarization. So that is to be maintained. So compared to single user system, a large antenna is also required, varying from two to three meter diameter in order to maintain a good signal to noise ratio at the indoor units. So here a few subscribers are used. You can see. This MATV. Same. Next is the CATV, Community Antenna TV System. So when we add some more users with the we add uh, some more users with the MATV in indoor, it becomes 
community antenna tv the best example is your cable operator so the community antenna tv employs a single outdoor unit with separate seats available like ma tv so instead of having a separate receiver for each user all carrier or demoted in a common receiver filter okay so in ma tv we can see that we are having a different receivers can see that receiver 1 2 3 4 5 6 till 10 might be available but in ca tv all the carriers would be fed on a single receiver okay is not having a separate receiver for each user we have will be having a single common receiver filter system so this can be deployed in remote areas where cable tv distribution this ca tv can be used in areas where cable tv distribution system cannot be installed so a signal can be rebroadcast from a low power vhf tv transmitter you can see the diagram here so from the outdoor unit which is a single 950 megahertz to 1450 megahertz a common wide band receiver is used so then it is fed to different users 1 3 or numbers on one side and 2 4 6 even numbers on one side so then it is been combined by a single common receiver then distributed to cable distribution so this is community antenna community antenna common receiver so let us see how the channels are combined so the channels are combined into a standard multiplex signal for transmission over cable to subscribers just your cable tv operator so the remote tv stations employs at a distance of 8 meter which is 26.2 feet antenna for reception of satellite tv signals in c band so the height of the antenna deployed in outdoor unit could be having a height of 8 meters with the ca tv system local programming material can also be distributed to subscribers that is your local channels can be distributed in ca tv where it is not permitted in ma tv so keep in mind local programming material is your local channels that are appearing in our homes whereas this local channel programming is doesn't appear in ma tv at all so this is an advantage of ca tv so any queries in uh, ma tv and ca tv queries in ma tv and ca tv you can put in chat box then i'll proceed for the next next topic transmit and receive at stations
any doubt queries or doubts srujana is there yes sir sir any doubts no sir so next week you will be having an uh, small assessment test in both unit 1 and 2 during the class hours so kindly prepare accordingly the material for unit 1 and 2 by today or tomorrow i'll post you in google classroom so those who haven't joined the google classroom kindly join it to access your uh, materials monday unit 1 and the tuesday unit 2 will be your test the pattern is uh, mcq multiple choice questions so that uh, mcq is will be given for the test as a practice for you any queries till now or else i'll proceed for the transmit and receive earth stations since i couldn't find any queries in the chat box i'll further move on to the next uh, topic <laughs> transmit receive earth stations so depending upon the uh, system depending upon the necessary and uh, situation only transmit station may be required for example, in relaying TV signals to the remote TV, receive only stations, TV RO systems, where only transmitter is enough. Just an example is your televisions that we are using, TV studios that they are transmitting, require, may require only transmitter at one part and receiver at another part is an example of that. So in some situations, both transmitter and receiver might be required. Okay, so the transmit and receive systems provide transmission and receiving functions that are required for telecommunications traffic. That includes your 
network television so a transmit only station is required in relaying tv signals to so remote tv receive only stations whereas transmit receive both stations provide both the functions that are required for telecommunications traffic so for this a number of different classes of edge stations are available depending upon the service requirements traffic can be uh, classified into uh, heavy route medium and thin route so a thin route circuit will have a transponder channel of 36 megahertz operating in c band and occupied by a number of single carriers each associated with its own y circuit and uh, this mode of operation in thin route circuit is known as single carrier per channel i'll show you that in the diagram so we have a baseband operation you can see so where the signals comes in and out then we have the antenna at the right hand side we have the bidirectional receiving antenna which is meant for transmitting and receiving both then this is your diplexer we are having a diplexer then we have a switch where the switch is used for both uh, giving a duplicate of the signals or duplicate receivers may be used where one receiver fails the other the other uh, the other receiver will work so we have a lna low noise amplifier then we have the divider which is given to a down converter then to the demodulator then to the switch and to the baseband connection this is at your receive part receiving end which is bottom and at the top we have the transmitting part so we have signals are fed to the baseband interconnection panel then given to the switch which is given to modulator for modulating your signals by using any of the modulation technique depending upon service then we have the up conversion then it is given to HPA, high power amplification. HPT transmitters are used, then given to switch, then to the diplexer, to the antenna. And this upper half is your transmission, bottom half is your reception. So reception and transmission in a single system is what this earth station is called as transmit as well as receive. So this is the function. And see that the top and receive at the bottom. So the earth station will act as both transmitting and receiving simultaneously. So this is the same which is used for terrestrial network. We have the antenna feed or the antenna signal. We have diplexer. Power amplifier at the transmitter, low noise amplifier at the receiver. Combiner at transmitter, divider at receiver. Up converters in transmitter and down converters in receiver, which carries your microwave carriers. And in higher frequency, we use the modulators at transmitter, demodulators at receiver. So then we have the multiplexing or demultiplexing unit which has the uh, signal processing for digital signals or the DSP processors are used with multiplex and demultiplexing equipments for processing of signals. Multiplexer at transmitter, demultiplexer at receiver, which are given by the baseband signals, then equipment for connection to the terrestrial network and to the corresponding users. So if the arrow mark is in upward direction, shows that the flow of signal. Okay. Upward direction is all transmitting, downward direction is all receiving. So this is an expanded view of that. Interconnection equipment is required for interconnecting the satellite station and the terrestrial network. So multiplexer is required for transmitter where a kind of reformating is maintained. So parallelly we will be using IF stages. 
the same block we have shown in larger is divided this into modulators is used in transmitter the choice of modulation technique is qpsk or qam for digital and fm for analog and if the up converter is implemented so it uses in if state 70 megahertz in rf it is 6.14 gigahertz sorry not 6.14 6 or 14 gigahertz in up converters so next is the carriers that are combined and the resulting white band signal is amplified and fed to the antenna as shown in the diagram through the diplexer so which allows simultaneous reception or transmission operations so the earth station antennas functions both as transmitter and reception modes but at different frequencies in up frequency the 4 or sorry, 12 or 14 gigahertz is used in reception it is used in order uplink will be higher Then a medium root circuit which uses either FTM, TDM as a multiple access schemes are used. Frequency division multiple access or a time division multiple access or a code division multiple access or a demand assigned multiple access scheme are used depending upon the users or depending upon the standard or service being required. So in a 6 or 4 gigahertz heavy root system, each satellite channel having bandwidth of 36 megahertz is capable of carrying over 960 one-way voice circuits simultaneously. Means that 960 people can transmit simultaneously in simplex. Or can make sure that a single color analog TV signal is associated audio can be recommended or accommodated here. So the subtopic in this is your traffic. We had said that traffic is of three types classification heavy route, medium route, and thin route. We have seen that thin route is a transponder channel 36 megahertz occupied by a number of single carriers associated with its own voice circuit. So the mode of operation is single carrier per channel sc pc in thin route where the antenna sizes ranges from about 3.6 meter or 11.8 feet for transportable stations up to 30 meters which is 98.4 feet for main terminals and let us see about the medium route so the medium root circuit provides multiple access either basis on FDMA or TDMA. So the antenna size ranges from 30 meter for main station to 10 meter for a remote station in medium root if the traffic is in medium. You can see thin root. Thin root. Antenna ranges from 3.6 meter to 30 meter. Whereas in medium route, 30 meter to 10 meter. In heavy route, for a 6 or 4 gigahertz heavy route system, each satellite channel is capable of carrying over 960 one way voice circuits simultaneously. Or a single color analog TV signal with associated audios. 
So for this, the transponder channel carries one large bandwidth signal, which may be television or multiplexed telephony, telephonic signals. So for this, the antenna diameter should be at least 